morning. Did you sleep well? You were exhausted yesterday, right? As soon as your head hit the pillow, you were out like a light. Billy, where's Wise? I haven't seen him. Oh, I just took him back to your store. The other manager and Caesar decided that they're gonna move some of the equipment into your car and set up a mobile proxy workshop. You mean moving the HDD equipment out here? Right. The other manager said working in the city would make communication difficult. Plus, smart devices are few and far between in the outer ring, and long-range data transmission could slow us down. Oh, morning, Proxy. You're awake. Billy's right. You'll be more efficient working from here in the outer ring. Don't worry. We'll take care of the power and network connection. Even in the outer ring, you'll be, uh... Walking on thin ice! <laughs> She probably meant we'll take to it like a fish to water. By the way, before the equipment arrives, let me take you to Blazewood and introduce you to the townsfolk. Lucy said you might not be used to roughing it with us, so I got the mayor to prepare a place for you. Oh, he shouldn't have. Ah, it's no problem. After we get back from town, go talk to Lucy and the others. I heard from your brother that you need to collect some hollow data before the race. Lucy and the gang are also preparing for the Tour d'Inferno. You should be able to help each other out. So this is the proxy from the city? Guess folks from New Eridu start working young, just like us. Caesar, who's this young lady? Young lady? <laughs> you city folks talk funny. I'm Casa, the mayor of Blazewood. The sons of Caledon have taken good care of our town. So if you need anything, just let me know. You can stay in the house behind me tonight. Sorry, it's still got some stuff that hasn't been moved out, but I'll get someone to clean it up. Hey, Casa! I notice a lot of people in town making these woven items. We don't have a choice. The pipeline to town still isn't fixed. Without a gas station, all we can do is make handicrafts to earn a living. Luckily, we got a big order recently, and with a Tour d'Inferno coming up, the Sunflints are selling like hotcakes. What's a Sunflint? Oh, it's a kind of handicraft woven from straw. During the Tour d'Inferno, almost every house in the old oil field hangs them up. pattern looks like an upside-down person. Wow, Proxy! You're pretty smart! The upside-down figure is the first overlord of the Motor League. The elders in the Outer Ring also say this design is the face of the god of sun and fire, guiding the hero to ignite Cinder Lake and return safely from the Hollow. Such a unique pattern must have a story behind it, right? Yup! Actually, this pattern represents the legend of the first overlords toward Inferno. Though the old oil field can still produce oil, did you know the core oil field was swallowed up by a hollow decades ago? Wait, isn't oil susceptible to ether corruption? Mm-hmm. After the disaster, etheric matter seeped through the underground facilities and oil pumps ruining the shallow oil reserves. But luckily, the collapse of the only deep drilling facility formed a unique natural gas vent. The burning gas kept the etheric matter from spreading further down. So the natural
natural gas vent is Cinder Goal Lake? The appearance of Cinder Lake saved everyone's livelihoods in the old oil field. But even with Cinder Lake, we can't rest easy. Natural gas and etheric matter burning together can easily turn into ether crystals building up around the lake. If left unchecked, more and more crystals will build up and eventually block the vent, extinguishing the lake. If that happens, the underground oil will be doomed. There was a time when Cinder Lake nearly went out. In order to save it, a young man and his friends risked their lives to enter the hollow and blast open an ether crystal using a special spark stone. Just like the one in my hand. into the only spot that was still burning in Cinder Lake and managed to ignite it. So, everyone makes sunflints in memory of his sacrifice. <laughs> oh, Proxy. I never said the first Overlord died there. It's normal for the Proxy to think that way. After all, everyone who went to Cinder Lake with him thought he was dead, but a day later, he miraculously emerged from the Hollow alive. Folks say the god of the sun and fire was moved by his bravery, allowing him to be reborn from the flames. Since then, the residents have drawn his face in the image of him diving into Cinder Lake on their sunflint. There's even a line from a folk song that goes, Diving into the fiery sea, the hero returns valiantly. Great story. No wonder it's widely told. Uh-huh. Kids in the old oil field grew up hearing that story. They used to play games pretending to be the first overlord in the Tor Inferno. Of course, the first overlord did more than that. After he returned, he gathered all the biker gangs in the old oil field and formed the Motor League. He also made the rule. Yeah, that's why the Tor Inferno continues to this day. It's still a feat only the strongest bikers can accomplish. But for us residents, it's become more of a festival. Just going to meet the mayor? What took you so long? We saw the sunflints in Blazewood and ended up hearing the legend of the Tour d'Inferno. <laughs> ah, so that's why Caesar was so pumped up. After all, that's her favorite story. She even said her dream is to become a hero, just like the first Overlord. If she really wants to be like the first overlord, she better forget those childish fairy tales fast. You're not a fan of this legend, Lucy? It's not that I dislike it, but come on, we're all grown-ups here. We should look at things realistically, don't you think? 
You mean, the Torrid Inferno only happened a few decades ago. How come it's turned into this huge legend? But using an act of God to spread his story far and wide? The first Overlord must have been pretty smart. Lucy, Caesar said this kind of old person talk will give you wrinkles. Nonsense! Don't listen to her lies! I use exfoliating face masks every day. No way I'll get wrinkles. <clears throat> Proxy, you can see it too, right? The Torrid Inferno is less about heroics and more about the first overlord securing control of the old oil field. Speaking of which, yesterday Caesar called you Montefio. Lucy, are you related to the prestigious new Eridu Montefio family? <laughs> prestigious? You're being a bit too generous to new money, aren't you? But yeah, we're family. So you're from the city? What made you give up that life? <sighs> it's because I never wanted that kind of life where everything is already laid out for you. Plus, my dad only cares about profits and business. Exactly! It's different in the Outer Ring, especially in the old oil field. The Motor League is all about freedom and justice. <laughs> That's what they say, but to survive, you can't forget about profits and business. Take the Sons of Caledon, for example. Employees need paychecks, vehicles need maintenance, and we need supplies that the city won't sell us. Which means we need connections and money. Proxy, I wasn't just making it up when I said the Overlord's faction is targeting us. The Sons of Caledon have had better rep than the Vanquishers these past few years. So, of course, they're jealous. But the recent bad roots we've been getting have hurt our income and recruiting new members has been an issue. So, for the future survival of the Sons of Caledon, we have to take the Overlord's title. You've got it all figured out. <laughs> I knew someone as sharp as Faithen would get it. Brute strength and passion alone won't get you far. Just watch. It won't be long before I beat Caesar and take the Sons of Caledon from her. <laughs> Lucy, you wouldn't admit it earlier, but it turns out you lost last night. N no I didn't lose! It was just a momentary truce! After all, prepping for the Turd Inferno is what's most important now. I can put becoming the boss on the back burner. Proxy, let's talk business. The other Faithen mentioned this morning that the lack of Hollow data in the Outer Ring is affecting your ability to perform in the Hollows. So for now, we'll be going into the hollows with you to gather data. Oh, I also need your help with something. The vehicles for the Tour de Inferno need some modifications. We need to get a hold of the necessary parts. Bell, I'm back. Good job, Wise. Come on, I'll help you set up the HDD. No need. I just tested the voltage and network speed here. The HDD is working fine. Fairy and Eos are pretty excited to be in the outer ring, but it's a new environment, so it'll take some getting used to. To help Caesar and the others win the race, let's start by gaining a bit of experience. All right, Belle. If you're ready, let's get going. Only the brave will win. <laughs> That's me! Whoa. So sweet. We fighting? Take
Take me. <laughs> Time for some joke here. of Caladon are here, as expected. Let's move! Stick to the plan! <laughs> Bell, Sons of Caledon, can you hear me? Our mission is to collect hollow data. Bell, you should be familiar with the process. Got it. It's just like that time with Billy. Don't worry, Proxy. Unlike Billy, we won't let the Ethereals chase you around. Speaking of which, I've been curious for a while now. Lighter always calls Billy brother. What's the story there? That's because every biker gang in the old oil field has champions. Lighter and Billy are our champions. The first overlord established that any gang joining the league must act with honor. Normally, the overlord mediates disputes. But if he's not around or an agreement can't be reached, they settle it with a duel. That's where the champions come in. <laughs> the boss is right. Champions bear the honor or humiliation of the entire gang. We also serve as the leader's bodyguards. However, considering the boss's strength, she really doesn't need protecting. What did Big Daddy say again? Ah, a ruler doesn't need to be the strongest or the smartest. Just someone who can unite the masses. But in the Sons of Caledon, I just so happen to be the best fighter. <laughs> How can you say that? Lighter doesn't have enough to do, and it's all because you can't control your temper and get into fights yourself! <sighs> I even had to find other tasks for him to do. <laughs> Proxy, to be honest, for the longest time, I thought Lighter was here just to do odd jobs. Well, Lucy sure knows how to get the most out of the money she spent. Master, you have reached the data collection area. Great, it's just up ahead. Data pile one initializing. Activation complete. Next installation location has been marked. Lucky it's not too far this time. Cool. Grab that data pile and let's move. Right away, your highness. Initializing.
Mission complete. You just need to install one more and it's done. The perfect installation location has been selected for you. It'll be a lot more perfect if it were closer to us. Data pile three, initializing. Watch out, more ethereals incoming. You're so young and nimble. <sighs> I'm cruising now. Warning. Biosignals detected near data pile 2. Let's go, Wise. Signals detected nearby. Hurry up! There they are! Move it up! Lighter! Lighter? Do you know those people? Don't think so. But judging by their get-ups, they're in a biker gang too. Take a break, Piper. something from the city, aren't you? Yeah, we've heard about the loudmouth strategist of the Sons of Caledon. It's clear you certainly know how to talk a big game, but we're not buying it. Look at these piles. There's no number on them at all. Huh? The numbers on the data piles are gone? 
You see, these data piles were just abandoned in the hollow. Unclaimed equipment. According to the League's rules, it's finders keepers. <laughs> to think the sons of Caledon would try to snatch our stuff using such a feeble lie. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> At first I thought you were just small-time crooks, but you've clearly come prepared. Lucy, what are you talking about? To grind off numbers engraved on a metal surface in such a short time, you'd need a specialized grinder. Since they've even gone to the lengths of preparing that kind of equipment, they must have planned for this well in advance. Ah, I see. <laughs> Since Lucy doesn't want me meddling, I'll leave this to you, Lighter. Got it, boss. Looks like it's my time to shine. Listen up. I may not know the reason, but it looks like you're looking for a duel. <laughs> now, since we're all bikers, this is the only fair way to solve a conflict. Lighter, they say you haven't lost a single duel since becoming a champion of the Sons of Caledon. It's time to remind you of the humiliation of defeat. <laughs> I don't think you'll be forgetting the Ember Arena anytime soon. <laughs> 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 yes. It was tough going for you for a while, huh? <laughs> Taste of pain must still be fresh in your memory. <laughs> to be straight with you, our champion's from there too, but while you were twiddling your thumbs, he built up a 20-fight winning streak. Wait. It can't be. <laughs> Bet you're shaking in your boots, Lyda. That's right. You know just who we're talking about. Uh, sorry. What? What's his name again? Lyda! You smug jerk! It's me, Balam! You ended my 21 streak, you cocky bastard! Just because your handsome skill happier and handsome, you think you can just forget my name? Wait, did he just say you're handsome twice? Bellum, huh? That's cool. I'll remember you. <laughs> Don't get me that crap! You've already said that three times! <laughs> Enough talking! Our briefings today, right here, right now! Lighter, it sounds like you're tougher than Bellum. <laughs> but all that stuff about you losing before, is this true? <laughs> of course it's true. I mean, winning isn't everything in that kind of place. Hey, Lighter! You'd better take this seriously! Don't try to find excuses when you lose. This one. Lighter! Take this! Man, stop yelling my name like that. Sounds weird. What should we do now? We, we were told that, that... Don't do anything. Leave the data piles for the sons of Caledon. I'll take responsibility for this. Okay. Okay. Understood, Bellum. Ryder. I came here to face you. Now that we fought, according to League rules, I concede defeat. I just didn't expect that after all these years. I still couldn't beat you or claim my honor. No, you're wrong. You never needed to reclaim any honor in the first place. I didn't mean to forget your name. It's just that everything in the underground fighting scene means nothing to me. What? Hurting an opponent for money, taking a dive for money. <laughs> That life has nothing to do with honor. 
Only those with no choice step into the ring. You were no different back then. You've got the skills to leave that place behind and become a biker gang's champion. Why leave your heart in that dark, cramped hellhole? <coughs> Murder, you... Do you mean... Be grateful for the outer ring. It doesn't care about your past or where you come from. If you've got the skills, you rewrite your fate. If you just want to test your mettle against me, say the word. I'm down any time. After all, I've got a rival that I've been itching to challenge for a while now. I... I will. Lighter. Um... Thank you. No problem, Bal... B Bal... Bellum. Uh, Lighter. You never intended on remembering my name. You're just messing with me again. Wait, aside from the name thing, I meant everything I said. That doesn't make me feel any better. The place that refits old vehicle parts is just past the hollow entrance. We'll be there soon. Hold on. Actually, I have a question. I heard from Bell that the factory in the hollow sells parts after they've been sorted. If that's the case, why not just buy them outside the hollow? It's simple, really. With so many bikers in the old oil field, the leftover parts that do end up reaching the market are the ones that no one wants. Exactly. It's like if you want top quality fresh fish. Someone has to set out to sea early in the morning and use an airship to get the ingredients back to the kitchen. You're overcomplicating things. But what do you expect from a Montefio? Proxy, it's way easier for us to come into the hollow to buy stuff compared to the hassle city folks go through just to have a meal. 